Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center and on today's episode of Beat the Icon, we're trying to figure out if there's anything out there that can beat the cheap thrills of the classic Opinel pocket knife. So if you're unfamiliar with the Opinel pocket knife, it truly is an iconic design. Because one, it's been around for so long. Joseph Opinel uh, began making these in France uh, way back in 1890. And not only has it been around that long, very little has changed since then because quite frankly, they got it right the first time. Now, even though they make several different sizes of this knife now, they're all essentially the same shape and construction. They're still made in the French Alps, Savoie, France. But this right here is the number eight, and it is the original. Three and a quarter inch long blade, stainless or carbon steel options available, ergonomically perfect handle, quite frankly. And it is so iconic that in 1985, London's Victoria and Albert Museum included it in an exhibition of their 100 let me make sure I get this right, the 100 best designed objects in the world. Now there are a couple things you're gonna see on this knife now that didn't exist originally, but they're real small refinements. The shape is the same. Uh, in 1955, Marcel Opinel came up with the Viroblock, or the locking collar on these knives, which on the stuff that's the, the number six size and larger, will keep that blade from closing. Whereas anything smaller than the knife does not have this rotating collar and is simply a friction folder design. Then in the 1990s, they tweaked that system just a little bit further by adding this extra little notch here at the base, which means when the knife is closed, you can twist that to keep the blade from opening as well. And by the year 2000, every one of their locking knives incorporated that feature by that point. So that's just a little taste of its history, but what about today? Well, if you've kind of grown tired of, you know, thick, overbuilt, chunky folding knives, the thing you get with an open L, this handle comfort, the lightweight, the nimbleness, and the sheer dedication to slicing efficiency is downright refreshing. But let's take a look a little more at this knife right here in front of us, the number eight. It has a three and a quarter inch blade. It is a clip point profile and the grind is what makes this so nice. The overall blade geometry in totality, I should say. First of all, look how thin that stock is. Very, very thin indeed. And then the grind itself is a full height convex grind. Of course, when you're dealing with something this thin to start with, instead of getting like a real noticeable apple seed, it's gonna be pretty indistinguishable from a full flat grind in the way it actually cuts through objects. But technicality is important, so we'll, we'll keep it there. And then to top it all off, to make this thing the best slicer it can be, the edges themselves, so thin. I mean, just a whisper of an edge and almost universally razor, razor sharp right out of the box too. Really, really excellent knife if what you want to do is slice. If you want to chop, pry, baton, do other crazy stuff with it, this is not your knife. But if you want your knife to do knife cutty things, slicey things, it's hard to beat the efficiency here. Back that up with an insanely comfortable handle. The standard version here is beechwood, unstained, and no hot spots at all because it is a single piece with just a slot cut out for the blade to fold through. The pivot is just a pivot, it's not adjustable. And the way it just fits into your hand is awesome. Now what you get from all of this, you get simple handle construction, you get a simple but very slicey blade. These things are incredibly affordable. Even now, this knife right here with the uh, stainless blade, $19 that we're selling it for. Very, very affordable. And a classic working pattern through the years that nowadays we see as just as classy as it is hardworking. It's kind of a unique thing in the marketplace. Very, very cool. But we're here to talk about the open L, but we're also here to talk about what else is there? What are some other alternatives if you're looking for an alternative? Well, there's honestly not a lot that you can look at and directly say, oh, that's uh, that's trying to be an open L. 
I got a couple here that, uh, that are pretty close, but then we're gonna have to use our imagination a little bit more. And there's some cool stuff to take a look at. Let's take a look first at OpenL's own lineup, actually. Here's another version of the number eight here. This is the number eight outdoor. And this is how they do a modern folder. A little more expensive, $40, Sandvix 14, or sorry, 12C27. Same blade, well actually technically not the exact same blade shape, but very similar. Uh, and then you've got the cutout, the partial serrations as well. You still have the lock. You've got a synthetic handle here, which is not gonna swell like the, uh, the wood on the classic models can. You've even got a whistle in the back. So this is the way a, a modern OpenL looks. Not quite a, a modern folder in any other context or in the, in the way that most quote unquote modern folders are designed today. But this is an option if you kind of like the OpenL thing, but not quite. Uh, this is another flavor that you could get. But what if you do like the classic flavor, so to speak? Well, let's go to Italy real quick with this, the Old Bear line of knives. They've got, I think, essentially three main sizes, whereas OpenL has several extra sizes. This is the large, comes in very affordable too, about $24. Carbon steel blade, we have a walnut handle, similar blade shape, it has a full flat grind similarly thin, so another good slicing option. Uh, fit and finish on the, uh, the edge itself, the sharpened edge, not quite as good as the open L's, I would say. Those hold the, uh, the edge out of the box <laughs> a little bit. Of course, if you know what you're doing with a uh, good stone, that's not gonna be a problem. And the innovation you see here over the uh, open L designs is instead of the rotating collar, we actually have this ring essentially inside the collar that acts as the blade stop. You can see a little tab moving right there in front of the tang of the blade. And like the OpenL's modern system, it will work to keep the knife closed as well. And it's a little easier to use, actually a lot easier to use that lock one-handed, which is gonna come into play probably more when you're going to close the knife, slide it out of the way, and then you can move the blade no problem. It's finger safe as well, you keep your fingers away from that edge as you do it. So really cool. Few different options, like I said, on size here, as well as some different woods. They do some special additions too. But this could be a, uh, a very easy alternative to recommend. Let's head over to uh, one of their other neighbors, Portugal, with the Mam Filmin knives. This is the 38 3AB liner locking folder. So construction is very similar uh, in its simplicity to the open L, but in this case, we do have a liner lock. Price on this one right here is actually even less expensive than our open L's nowadays, about $12 for this knife. Simple stainless steel, I'm not even sure exactly what kind it is, but at $12, it almost doesn't matter, <laughs> quite honestly. Beechwood handle, just like the open L. Drop point blade profile, as opposed to the clip point in this particular case. Liner lock, as you can see right there. Interestingly, it is a left-handed, a left-hand biased liner lock, at least, I should say. Still can be used, of course, with either hand, but if you're used to the way most liner locks work today as a right-hander, this is gonna go in the opposite direction. Build quality feels just as good. The actual uh, edge or blade geometry is similar, but the edge is a little bit thicker, not quite as thin. And that's gonna get, uh, kind of get down to a point I wanna make. When it comes to everything else out there, you're probably not gonna be able to beat the sliciness of the open L with anything on this table. Not for the price, the sliciness for the priciness, but at almost any price. If you want the most efficient pocket knife blade you can get, I'm not sure what is gonna be better than an open L, quite frankly. But we're here to talk about alternatives, so we'll keep doing that as well. What about some stuff that's not quite as direct as the, uh, the old bear and the mam, mam, mom. I'm not sure how you pronounce that actually. Neither do I. Anyway, interesting. There are some other things we can look at if you like the simplicity of the open L. And I say simplicity, not lack of complexity, however, to the, uh, the shape, lack of sophistication anyway. But there are other just classic basic pocket knives that have a simpler construction that just plain work that could be an alternative you could look at. One of which is the, uh, the Okapi style knives, which we don't have any of, uh, of the direct Okapi branded stuff here, but Cold Steel makes this, the Kudu Ring Lock, which is the same kind of genre 
as the Okapi. $13 for this knife, and it is a four and a quarter inch 5CR stainless blade. Simple injection molded handle as opposed to the, uh, the wood construction typical of the Okapis. Nice thin blade, full flat grind, big handle, just basic working knife. And the pivot on these are actually ratcheting. And you unlock these versions here by pulling up on this ring and that disengages the part of the lock that interfaces with the tang of the blade and push it forward with your thumb. It can be a little dicey to think about doing, but as mentioned, this is a ratcheting bladed knife. So you've got like several half stops basically to uh, keep it from going too far on you. $12 knife here. I mean, that is a ton of blade for the money. So if you're just looking for inexpensive yet efficient slicing knives, this is definitely worthy of consideration as well. Now let's take a look at another knife I'm quite fond of, the Otter Mercator Zollingen K55 Black Cat. Another cool basic knife. What this lack, or what this has in simplicity, it does lack in handle comfort. This is a, at least compared to the Open L, this is a simple folded metal handle, so it carries nice and slim. That could be an advantage if you like the classic Open L simplicity, but they're a little bulky for you in the pocket. Something like this could give you an alternative right there. Now this blade is also available in carbon or stainless. The blade length is about three and a half inches, a little bit thicker than the Open L, but not overly, not overly thick, drop point, full flat grind, and really cool thing here, an actual lockback style of mechanism. Rather than a cutout though in the handle itself, it's a tab that sticks up, which actually surprisingly doesn't really get in the way, even kind of pushing on this knife hard, my palm is barely making contact with that unlocking tab. So rather smartly placed for utility's sake. Just a great basic pocket knife, simple. The knife is a little bit more expensive than what we've been looking at so far, but it's still pretty inexpensive, about $30 right now. Kind of in a similar vein, I've got another knife here uh, that we'll look at, and it also gives us a chance to look at some other French knives. Let's say you appreciate the idea of buying a French made knife. Well, check out the Duke Duke. Here it is right here. Similar to the Black Cat, we have a folded metal handle, but in this case, no locking mechanism. This is simply a slip joint style knife there. And you can see it has a half stop along the way too. And the back spring for that slip joint, you can see it there when you look down from the closed position. It is kind of folded or nestled underneath the folded metal exterior. Price on these, eh, about 30 bucks as well, but the blades here are carbon or stainless steel blades. About three and a, about three and a half inches on this as well. Very distinct profile near the tip. Very sharp edges too. Little bit thicker than the Open L. So even though the edges themselves, they get kind of that same whisper-like quality that I like on an Open L offset a little bit by the slightly thicker blade stock. Still gonna be an excellent slicer though, for sure. Next up from France, we have the Laguiole style knife. And these definitely don't have uh, what the Open L has going for it, and that is the low prices. Most of these are quite expensive because they are handmade, lots of attention to detail going on. This is a Laguiole Honoré Durand folding knife. It has similar wood style here, actually this uh, oak barrel wood in this case, not beech wood. Uh, but the price on this, regular price, um, it's a bit over $200. We actually have this on sale as we're filming this for about 170. Not sure how long that price is gonna last, however. And this is a slip joint style mechanism like the Duke Duke right there. Three and three eighths inch blade, high polish, lots of cool details on the back. So if you like kind of the, the style thing that the Open L gives you, but you want more, this could definitely be worth a look. File work on the spine, file work on the back spring, the classic B there at the back of the bolster. Pin out pattern in the, uh, the dotted cross motif going on that it is so famous for. Snappy action, as you can see, really nice fit and finish. The shape is very different from most knives you can find today in that it is kind of flat in a way. But as you hold it for smaller EDC tasks, it doesn't actually feel 
wrong. It doesn't get in the way. Very, very cool things. Like the OpenL, no pocket clip. Actually, nothing we've looked at so far does have a pocket clip, but we're gonna get to a few things here. That's because in this case, you have a leather pocket slip right there. And if you want something similar for an OpenL, they actually do make an accessory right here. I should have mentioned it earlier. But this is about $12. It is faux leather and felt, essentially. And rather cool looking. It would look really nice, especially in a pair of uh, denim jeans, I would say. All right, next up is, there is a French connection here. It is a knife that is made in China, but it is designed in France by a French company. This is the Dijo knife. And whereas with something like the OpenL, I like to say that it looks good whether you're on a farm or whether you're in the downtown streets of Brooklyn. The Dijo is more of a, of a downtown Brooklyn knife than it is a farm knife. Definitely kind of in the Venn diagram between it and the, uh, the OpenL, it's going for style. Price on this about 84 bucks. Long blade, three and three quarters of an inch, drop point profile, nice and slender. You've got the nice wood onlay here, screwed to the front, a scale essentially, and a liner lock. Almost, you could technically call it maybe a frame lock since there is nothing behind that liner or frame there on the back. There is, however, that pocket clip. So this thing's going to carry very slimly in your pants. Not so much a one hand opener, but it does have the one hand closing down a lot more than your typical open O, unless you're dealing with one of the, uh, the non lockers, of course, those are a little bit easier to use. All right, getting back to something a little simpler though. Uh, let's say you like the non locking open L stuff. Well, check out the Sword peasant knife, perhaps. Again, genre wise, we're talking about basic knives that were used by, you know, the, the, historic equivalent of the blue collar people, the people working from the bottom, the farm hands, the workmen, that sort of thing. And the sword peasant, the peasant class perhaps would have been a better term to describe what I was just talking about. They make wood handled versions, but this one right here with its synthetic handle, about 15 bucks, very, very affordable. Two and a half inch blade on this one. There is a larger size available. These are a carbon steel, you know, simpler carbon steel blade. Not convex in their geometry, I don't think, but the edge itself is convex. Rather interesting. The use of this knife is very simple. You've got the protruding tang here at the top. You can open it easily one-handed, and then when the knife is being held, your thumb should help prevent the blade from folding closed. You get a little extra strength or a little extra pressure keeping it there. And like the classic Open L, we've got Handles that while aren't as contoured, they are nice and filling and nice and comfortable to use as well. Could definitely be worth a look. All right, let's talk about a few more slip joints now. And I promise we do have some, some truly modern alternatives to the open L. We're almost there. Uh, so if that's what you're waiting for, just stick around a few more minutes with me. Another Italian knife. This is, well, it says here on the blade, the Siciliano knife. Uh, we've got it on our site as the Zuavo Lungheza folding knife. Quite affordable here. Regular price, less than 40 bucks on this knife. You've got a three and three quarter inch blade and check out the profile compared to the Open L. Very, very similar, but not quite the same. A Little bit of a uh, deeper clip there or a longer clip gives it a little more motion. You've got nice thin blade steel. Here it is compared to the Open L number eight, a little tiny bit thicker, but you've got a full flat grind and a sharp edge, not as thin as the Open L's edge though. Still a very good slicer and a lot of reach on this particular knife as well. We've got a brass bolster, simple pinned construction there, and a faux buffalo horn inlay, bale at the back like a few of the knives we've looked at. And very, very snappy action. This particular one, a little bit harder to open to. It's actually been breaking in a little bit as we've worked, but this thing has a lot going for it as a classic slip joint alternative to something like the Open L as does the Sodbuster. Whether you go with a small Sodbuster Junior, like this case knife, or the larger versions, such as the case knife, or this Schrade Imperial large Sodbuster right here. These as well, I kind of consider, even though the Schrade right now is made in China, as kind of like the American open L, the American version of the peasant knife, the working person's knife that was unadorned, un fancified, just meant to get hard work done. 
and there you go. Thin blades, full flat on the Schrade, full height hollow on the case. Just a basic knife that gets stuff done. Probably doesn't have quite the same kind of fancy connotations that the classic Open L does, unless you're getting into like custom sodbuster territory, which is kind of a funny concept to even think about, but that is a thing you could take a look at too. All right, now we're getting to some, some actually truly modern stuff. And I think the main distinction here between the classic Open L experience and like the, the standard modern experience is in addition to the prevalence of pocket clips, we're also talking about one hand opening blades, usually with locks too. And this one was harder than, uh, than some of the traditional stuff. Again, having to stretch our imaginations here a little bit. I got a few that I think make sense to me at least. And the first is another European design from Victorinox. This is the Swiss Army Knife Sentinel, one hand Sentinel, available with or without a pocket clip actually. Uh, price on this, a little bit more than your classic Open L, but still affordable, about $49 right now. Just a single blade of their simple stainless steel, high flat grind, technically a full flat if we don't include the, uh, the hump for the opening hole right there. Don't have quite the same acute point that you would get on an Open L without kind of spending a little bit of time with a stone at least. But apart from that, the fit and finish is world class. This is a liner lock, like the Portuguese made knife from earlier, it's kind of a left hand biased lock. And you've also got the toothpick and tweezers as well, which is a nice little bonus. Synthetic handles, a little bit on the thinner side, but still have a good comfort thing going for them. Simplicity and reliability that you would get with an open L. You get the same kind of thing here, but I'd say even more reliable because you've got more stable handle materials right here. The next modern one is from Spyderco actually, and it is part of their ethnic series of knives, which takes a look at some of the kind of old classic working people's knives that were out there, especially this one right here. And that knife is the Patadese from Spyderco, from uh, the city of Sardinia actually, in its pattern, or tracing its pattern back to that region. And while I could have gone with something like the Chaparral from their lineup for its thin blade stock, part of the Open L experience is that comfortable handle. And this Patadese is gonna give you a little bit more of that than the flat handles on the Chaparral. You've got G10 with a bit of contouring going on and the blade stock is still quite thin. Not as thin as an Open L, but quite thin by modern standards. Full flat grind, it's gonna slice really nicely. Very acute tip, a lot less in the way of the belly department than the open L. So if you're looking for a cheap knife that might be doing some small game work, this might not be your primary choice. Although this style of blade was often used uh, in fish markets and that sort of thing. So a little bit of a, a slight difference there. Really nice though, this knife is actually made in Maniago, Italy, which is kind of cool, especially in the context of this comparison to the other uh, knives on the table. Liner lock, wire deep carry pocket clip, which works on either side an action that allows you to flick it open quite easily and that liner lock holds it open quite well also. Really, really cool knife. Uh, price on this is very un open -L like however, about 213 bucks at this point in time. This next one is, it was, it was on the edge for me. It was borderline whether I wanted to include it in the video or not, but because of the, uh, the Lagiole and the Dijo, it kind of opened up the, uh, the door for this a little bit and that's the Boker Urban Trapper. And when you put it against those two other knives specifically that I mentioned, it makes a lot of sense. I feel like they're almost playing like their own side game, their own side hustle for this, uh, the rest of this video. But it's a cool knife to talk about. Locking or non-locking versions available. This one right here is the number 42 version, which means it's non-locking. It has a detent joint mechanism and yet it still flips. Kind of cool. So like the Open L's, you have a locking and non-locking option. It has the classiness factor going on for sure. Three and a half inch, 3.4 inch VG10 blade right here. High degree of finish on the blade with its horizontal grain. The, uh, the wood scaled version is for sure the option to include in, in this comparison, but there are other options available too. And a couple different sizes, just like the Open L range. So that's really cool. Deep carry pocket clip to keep things nice and easy. Sliciness factor, little bit less. It's 
not aggressively thicker than the open L, but it is thicker and the blade width is, or the blade height is not as tall either. So a little bit less uh, efficient, however, still a good daily slicer too. Price on this uh, non-locking version right now is about 137, uh, but when you look at the whole range, uh, the least expensive standard price right now is about 90 bucks. So definitely not as affordable as an open L, but you've got a range to choose from. All right, what about a modern folder that has all this stuff? You got a pocket clip, you've got a lock, you've got one hand opening and closing, but something that can maintain the kind of classic working roots of the open L. And to keep things in a, a similar-ish shape, there's one thing that readily comes to mind to me, and that is the Ontario Rat Model 1. 3.6 inch blade for about $34 right now. And I even tried to pick one that was a uh, handle color to keep it as close to the Open L vibe as I could. Definitely a thicker blade here than the Open L, but full flat grind, slicey enough. The Rat One really, to my mind, is a modern alternative to the affordable working folding knife. You've got plenty of blade here. The shape is great. While you don't have a contoured handle, you've got plenty to hold onto and it is pretty comfortable in fact. It doesn't feel super blocky. Hot spots are pretty minimal to me at least for my hands. And it's just in its bones, reliable and ready to do an honest day's work like the Open L is. Very cool knives. Several different versions to choose from. You've even got the uh, Rat Model 2, which offers about a three inch blade. There you go. But last but not least, this is the knife that I think comes absolutely the closest in, a, in, a, in the terms of a, a modern style context to what the Open L can offer. And that is the Benchmade Tagged Out. Here it is, $180, so it, you can get several open L's for this price, yes. But check them out side by side. Size is about the same. Weight, they're both virtually nothing. <laughs> like they both virtually disappear in your pocket. Uh, as lightweight as the tagged out is at 2.1 ounces, the open L is actually a little bit uh, slimmer, 1.6 or a little bit less but that's a kind of a distinction without a difference right there. Both of these are virtually unnoticeable when they're in your pocket. They've both got that clip point shape. They've both got full flat grind, well, not a full flat grind on the open L, but they've both got that full height, thin, narrow grind. And check out how thin the blade stock is on that Benchmade. Not quite as thin as the open L, but almost absurdly thin in terms of modern pocket knife construction context. Very, very cool knife. Uh, 3.6 inch, sorry, 3.5 inches on the blade here. The handles themselves aren't super contoured, but they are not flat either. They actually feel to my hands quite comfortable indeed. The facets or the, uh, the shape that they do have going on there is quite nice. You've got a deep carry pocket clip and you've got the axis lock. And that crossbar allows finger safe, fidget friendly, flicking action. Very, very cool. This is Benchmade's kind of modern, no compromises take on slicing efficiency, which is where the Open L's bread and butter is made. They even omitted a thumb stud in favor of a thumb or a blade cutout, which is more infrequent in Benchmade's lineup in order to not impede the slicing power of the blade. Very, very cool. CPM 154 steel too, so you've got powder metallurgy to back it up. That's it. I, I really like that combination. And in a way, thinking of that knife compared to the Open L is what inspired us to kind of do this full out comparison today. And I hope it was interesting. It was kind of fun to think about and fun to kind of draw the lines between these different things that while on their face may not seem like they could take on the icon, it makes a certain amount of sense. But here's where you get to tell us whether you think that's true of any of these knives or not. Do any of these come close to holding a candle to what makes the Open L knife special? You let us know down in the comments what you think, or if you have any other suggestions, drop them down there as well. In the meantime, if you wanna get your hands on any of these knives, check out the links in the description to take you to knifecenter.com. And don't forget our Knife Rewards program while you're there. 
because if you're buying one of these knives today, at least you'll get to earn some free money to spend on your next ones. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center signing off. See you next time.